I'm currently flying from Chicago, Illinois to Vienna, Austria in Austrian Airlines business class. And normally this seat would cost thousands of dollars, but thanks to points and miles I earned through credit cards, it only cost a little over five bucks. I'd say we're way more comfortable this way. In today's video, we're gonna dive into how to actually use your hard earned points to book travel. I'll show you how to book hotels, flights, and even walk you through how I know if I'm getting a good redemption value. And make sure you stick around to the end where I will give you the exact rundown of how I booked these seats for five bucks. Redeeming your points or miles for travel can be one of the most confusing and intimidating parts of travel hacking. And what I've witnessed is there are a lot of people with points just sitting on the sidelines. So let me say this real quick. The purpose of earning points is to use them. I know many people who have massive stashes of points, and if you're saving up for some big trip, that's great, but be careful not to do that for too long. Point programs can be devalued over time, and in certain cases, points expire. So if you're the person hoarding points right now, here's your reminder, use your points. Redemption strategies. There are levels to everything, and I'm gonna walk you through basic and intermediate methods. And along the way, I'll show you how to calculate the redemption value so you know that you're getting your money's worth, so to speak. My intention is to teach you the fundamentals and give you the tools to do this yourself. Let's start basic. The most basic way of redeeming your points is using them to book directly with airlines and hotels. And if you already know how to do all of this, go ahead and skip to this timestamp where I'll pick things up with online travel portals. Now you're gonna wanna sign up for hotel and airline loyalty programs for any place that you're gonna book. These are free and the easiest way to begin is to simply make sure that any flight you're taking or hotel you're staying in, you go ahead and join their loyalty program. Here's the basic step-by-step -step guide on how to book an award flight with an airline using frequent flyer miles. You'll go to the website of the airline that you wanna book with, and you'll look for the options to search for award flights. You'll usually probably have to log in. And this may be labeled differently depending on the airline, example, book with miles, redeem flights, et cetera. But you'll enter your departure and arrival cities, travel dates, and number of passengers. Browse through the available flights and select the one that you want. Make sure that you have enough miles in your account, of course, to cover the flight. And if you don't, you may be given the option to purchase additional miles. Confirm the flight details and complete the booking process. Boom, it's that easy. Now, look, you will almost always have to pay something. There are taxes and fees like fuel surcharges when you book using points. And this varies intensely by airline, by country, etc. And some are just completely unavoidable, but some are avoidable, like baggage fees. That's a choice. Now, I'm usually a carry-on only traveler, but if you're not, that's totally up to you. If you have the credit card of the airline you're flying with, a perk that's often offered if you book using that card is a free check back. Hotels. When it comes to hotels in the points and miles world, there are four main players. They're Hilton, Hyatt, Marriott, and IHG. And there are, of course, others, but in the terms of major loyalty programs, these are the big boys. And I would go ahead and just sign up for all four of these loyalty programs. The basic, simplest, beginner process of booking a hotel night is almost identical to booking an award flight. Search for the hotel, dates, select book with points, make sure you have enough points, and voila. But here's a few hotel-specific nuances. There's often an option now where you can use points and cash. If you don't have enough points to cover your entire booking, some of these companies will allow you to book using a combination of both points and cash. And you can kind of play with different scenarios and different ways to do that. Booking with a free night certificate. Every one of the programs I mentioned offers a free night certificate, typically when you carry one of their co-branded credit cards. Not always, but most of the time. The booking process looks very similar, except you'll use a free night certificate when you book. And usually these free night certificates are limited to a certain category of hotels or a hotel stay under a certain amount of points. There are also what are called multi-night discounts. For example, Marriott offers a promo where if you book four nights, you get a fifth night free. Hilton, book four nights, get a fifth free. IHG, book three nights, get a fourth free. Hyatt, nothing of the sort. So you get 
nothing. Okay, let's move on to some more intermediate redemption strategies. Using online travel portals offered by credit card companies like Chase, Amex, Capital One, and others can be a great way to earn points, but it's also a good place to redeem them. The pros are you can book all kinds of flights and accommodations, even ones that may not be transfer partners of the card that you have, and you can book using your points with that bank. If you don't have sufficient points, you could also use a combo of points and cash. Some cards even offer statement credits for booking certain types of properties. For example, if you have the American Express Platinum card, you can use $200 toward the fine hotels and resorts collection. Combining your Amex points with an actual purchase that you'll make on your Amex is a great way to get a really unforgettable place to stay. A con, these booking engines are often undergirded by third parties like Hopper, Booking.com, et cetera, which means you aren't booking direct with the airline or the hotel, which means you usually won't get status, elite credits, et cetera. And the other thing is, sometimes the pricing in these portals can be higher than if you were to just book direct. And you may often get a better value from your points by just transferring them instead. Transfer partners. With cards like the Chase Sapphire Preferred or Reserve, the American Express Gold and Platinum, and the Capital One Venture X, and many, many more, you can transfer your points to partner airlines and then book directly using those points. And this part really seems to intimidate people, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. Three steps, three easy steps. Search, transfer, book. So for example, let's say I find a flight on Singapore Airlines, but I don't have any Chris Flyer miles. I know that Singapore Airlines is a transfer partner of Chase. So I can go to my Chase account and transfer the exact amount of miles I need to Singapore Airlines. Note, make sure that your flight is available before you do this. You cannot put miles back into your Chase account. Then I proceed to book my flight with Singapore Airlines. Now you're probably thinking, okay, but what if I wanna fly with an airline that isn't one of my card's transfer partners? Let's talk about airline alliances. Maybe you've heard of these, but what are they for? Well, think of airline alliances as big teams of airlines from around the world. By teaming up, they can offer you more destinations, smoother connections, and better service. Airline alliances help you have a more connected, comfortable journey, especially if you're flying internationally. And they're very crucial to points and miles and airline loyalty programs because often you can use your points with one airline to book flights on another airline in that alliance. There are three major alliances, Star Alliance, One World, and Sky Team. One example of this, American Airlines is not a transfer partner of any of the big card programs, Chase, American Express, Capital One, City, but they are in an alliance with British Airways. And British Airways is a transfer partner of Chase, American Express, and Capital One. So I say all of that to say, using transferable points to transfer them to airlines can be one of the most valuable uses of your points. But if you understand the various airline alliances out there, it can be even more powerful. Okay, now that you know the simple, basic ways to use your points and a couple of the intermediate ways, let's talk about points values. Points and miles are a type of digital currency, so they've got some kind of value, right? When you use your points, how do you know if you're getting a good value? Getting your money's worth, so to speak. Well, to figure this out, you need to consider two things. One, point value. What is a point or mile actually worth in terms of dollars? And two, redemption value. What is the value for your points or miles in this specific booking scenario? So what is a point or mile worth? Much smarter people than me spend a lot of time figuring this stuff out. And there are resources that I personally reference regularly. I like to use the points guy. They have a list of most of the points currencies out there and they've determined the cash value for these points. You'll notice that they're all expressed in cents per point, right? Chase Ultimate Rewards, two cents per point. Southwest Airlines, one and a half cents per point, etc. And they update this huge list monthly. This is very data driven, but in the end, some of it is still kind of subjective. So if this says American Airlines miles are worth 1.7 cents per point, then that is a great goal to shoot for when redeeming. That's point value. So what about redemption value? To determine redemption value, we need to do a little math. And what we're solving for is the same figure, cents per point. So when considering the value of any given redemption, what you need is 
the typical cash price for this redemption and what it would cost if you used points or miles. The basic formula is cash price divided by number of points and then you multiply that by 100. But award bookings tend to have taxes and fees, remember? So let's include that too. We'll subtract that from the cash price. So find out the cash value of the flight or hotel you're redeeming your points for, then determine the number of points that you would need to use to get that flight or hotel, plus any taxes or fees. And now subtract the taxes and fees from the cash value and divide that number by the number of points. Then you multiply by 100 to get the value in cents. I don't know about you, but I am not a fan of having to do a bunch of manual math or remember a bunch of steps. Personally, I would rather have like a calculator or a tool do it for me. There are actually a bunch of tools all over the internet and I found a great one on Reddit years back. I took it and I modified it slightly and I linked that below. Uh, feel free to grab your free copy. It's super simple to use. So here's an American Airlines flight that would normally cost 200 bucks, but this flight costs 19,000 American Airlines miles plus $5 and 60 cents in taxes and fees. So I'm going to plug this in to our calculator. $200 cash price, 19,000 points or miles to redeem, $5.60 taxes and fees for redemption, and it spits out the cents per point you're currently getting and then automatically tells you what the best value will be. In this case, you would probably be better off just paying cash. Now, there's no perfect redemption. Um, in this instance, one cent per point is quite a bit different than 1.7 cents per point. I actually think this is a really bad redemption. But let's say for whatever reason you don't have $200 cash to spend on this flight and you do have 19,000 American Airlines miles laying around, use your points. Don't stress out worrying about did I get a perfect redemption value. These points are meant to be used for travel. You should still shoot for a great redemption, but in certain instances, like the one I just laid out, maybe it makes sense to use them. Okay, let's talk about a great redemption value. How did I book those Austrian Airlines seats? Well, I actually used several of the techniques that I showed you in this video. I was searching on united.com, which is actually a great place to find award flights for more airlines than just United, thanks to the Star Alliance network. My goal was simply to find affordable ways to get to Europe in a business class seat. Now we're not always in this situation and I recognize many people watching are gonna be like, no, I wanna go to this particular destination. But in this instance, we didn't have a specific destination in mind. I was just determined to find a great deal on business class seats to Europe. We wanted to go to Europe and then build a trip around that. Upon searching United, I found a trip from Chicago to Vienna in business class. The flights were on Austrian Airlines, which is a Star Alliance airline. Now this isn't the most amazing seat in the world. It's not Emirates first class or anything, but it's a lie flat seat, my friend, let me tell you. And they have a professional chef on board. This seat can normally cost over $5,000 per person. And I found it for only 88,000 United miles. That's how I booked my seat, but I actually booked Ali's separately. Why? There are actually other Star Alliance partners with solid options to search out there, so I tried one more. I was actually able to find the same flight through Avianca, which is a Latin America-based airline and a transfer partner of American Express, Citi, and Capital One for only 63,000 miles. This is called a sweet spot, which is essentially an unbelievably good redemption. A deal, if you will. Getting from the USA to Europe on 63,000 miles is a perfect example of a sweet spot and Avianca does it all the time. There are tons of sweet spots out there, but it can kind of feel like striking gold because it takes a lot of research and trial and error. Avianca is a transfer partner of American Express, so we used some of Ali's Amex membership rewards points to make this happen. And we got those points through her Amex Platinum. The flight was amazing. We got to spend nine hours eating gourmet food, watching movies, sleeping in a life flat bed, and waking up mostly refreshed, ready to explore Vienna. I say mostly because we had our nine month old with us. Uh, she did pretty good, but she's still a nine month old. I hope this series on points and miles is helping you dream up a similar scenario for yourself, and you're starting to believe it would be very possible to pull off. Make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so that you know when part three in this series drops. And in the meantime, I've linked to several resources, including the redemption calculator I showed you 
down below. When the next video in our series is live, it will live right here. Thank you so much for watching. Happy travels.